right, we're live again with another Wild Heritage episode of Barnyard with Becca. Today we're gonna talk about chickens, but specifically these adorable guys. These chicks are only two weeks old, and you'll get the chance to see all of them. We have five here, but I'm going to start with this little guy to show a couple things about a baby chick. So you can see it's super fuzzy. Those aren't typical feathers. These are down feathers. They're just little puffs of hair almost, but it's a feather that keeps them warm. That's because baby chicks for the first several weeks of their life have to be kept at about 95 degrees, which it's already that hot outside today <laughs> without any help. But they have a heat lamp and this down to keep them warm because they can't thermoregulate yet. They can't keep their regular body temperature that they're supposed to be at yet. And they don't have their mom to sit on them right now because they're in our bedding zoo. He just demonstrated another thing I was going to point out, their perfect pointy little beak. A chicken's pointy beak is for pecking at the ground. They eat insects, they eat seeds, and so it's the perfect beak for pecking at the ground to see what there is. We feed them grain, but they do always find what they want to get into and munch on. Also, he's trying to perch with these little feet. These feet are perfect for scratching at the ground and perching. Perching is the act of a chicken scrunching up its feet to perch. <laughs> he doesn't quite have those muscles developed yet, but they perch just like songbirds. So chickens are actually derived from a wild bird called the red jungle fowl that is native to Southeast Asia that Mankind has pretty much been domesticated almost since its beginning. And uh, in fact, it was used for feathers and things for ceremonial purposes for years before they were ever used for eggs or for meat. But then in the 15th century, the Egyptians d discovered that this bird, quote, gives birth every day. And they named it something in their language that means the bird that gives birth every day. <laughs> and so they started using it for eggs even before meat. And then they discovered the breastbone, nice and big use for flight, would also be good for meat. So thus begins chickens. Now, we have over 175 different breeds of chickens and we have three of them here today. And these are all heritage breeds. The one I have right here is an Orpington chicken and it's nestling down in my hand, so adorable. So the Orpington chicken is named after Orpington in England, just outside of London. And actually, they started as a blackbird. Ours is lavender and there's many different color varieties today. But they started to be bred to be black because the man who started their breed noticed that when he was selling chickens in London, the darker colored chickens would sell better than the lighter colored chickens because of all the soot and uh, the dirt in the air in London in the late 1800s. But now they've been selected for many different colors and prettiness, so we have a lavender Orpington here, and they are bred for eggs. It's said that the lavender Orpingtons, or Orpingtons in general, can lay up to four, 340 eggs a day. That is, or not a day, <laughs> a year. <laughs> That's crazy. That's like an egg a day almost. So this guy is our little lavender Orpington. I'm gonna let him get down here and get a Dominicker. This is another heritage breed. A Dominicker chicken is considered America's first breed because it was bred from various chickens that they brought over, the colonists brought over for hardiness. They took the chickens that withstood the cold weather the best and could find their own food without having to be fed grain the best. And so they got the most hardy chicken of all, the Dominicker. Also, the famous Plymouth Rock breed of chicken was bred from the Dominicker. So this little guy is a very hardy breed and is popular in many different regions because he thrives on his own, kind of like our Scottish Highlanders we were talking about last week. They are a very multi-purpose breed. People use them for feathers, for feather pillows. In fact, most feather pillows and feather mattresses um, back in colonial times was made from Dominickers, and they use them for eggs and meat. 
So it was kind of an everything bird. <laughs> and they're super adorable. And when they grow up, they have black and white checkers all over them, kind of like a domino. So it's like they named them Dominique and then it turned into Domineckers is their name. Then they're all keeping warm under their heat lamp here. This is a breed that you might be pretty familiar with just because of a cartoon. This is a leghorn chicken. It's the kind of chicken that Foghorn Leghorn from Looney Tunes is modeled after. And this guy looks like your stereotypical, adorable, yellow little chick. And um, they actually grow up to be very good egg layers. And the Foghorn Leghorn uh, parallel is because these guys look like the classic big white chicken and they were actually originated in Italy and brought over by Italian um, immigrants and they um, did very well because they lay white eggs. So people believed that their white eggs were better than the brown eggs that other chickens laid and thought they must have been superior so they became very popular egg layers for their large white eggs. <laughs> Peep for the camera there. So we have over 19 billion chickens on earth now. Um, and that's because it is a very easy to keep animal for multiple purposes. So all over the world, people keep chickens and they all start like adorable little chicks like this. <laughs> but it also makes them the most populous bird on earth. So they're really obviously interesting for many, many reasons. And you might have heard me explain what a heritage breed was last week if you watched the Scottish Highlander video, but I'll explain it again for those of you who might be new. So a heritage breed is basically a breed of animal that our ancestors bred for a specific purpose in our past that is maybe not so popular for that same reason today, just because it's harder to keep or isn't as genetically modified and improved as what they typically use for eggs or meat or feathers today. So, but just like our antiques we display here, we don't throw them away because we don't use them anymore. We keep them to show people what worked for our ancestors and how we got here today. So heritage breeds do the same thing for animals. We don't just let the animals that our ancestors use die off. We keep those breeds that they bred specifically and used every day so that we can learn more about what their lives were like and we can learn more about how we got here today. Come visit these little chicks as soon as you can because they're not going to be this small for very much longer. <laughs>